In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by calling to mind for a moment our sin, our failing, and asking the Lord for his pardon, mercy, and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priest and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees, so he called out before the Sanhedrin, my brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no res resurrection, or angels or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, we find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The word of the Lord. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the needle world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, 
that they may also be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love me, and you love them even as you love me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Ut unum sint is uh, an encyclical by uh, a holy father, Pope, Pope John Paul II, that all might be one. And in writing uh, this encyclical, he speaks about the need for the unification of the Christian church, a word that first begins with the notion of a church breathing with two lungs by his uh, pre predecessor, Paul VI, that somehow the Eastern Church and the Western Church, but not simply the Eastern Church and the Western Church, but indeed uh, even those churches which would be part of the Protestant Reform Movement, all believers in Jesus Christ uh, should be one. This is the great priest prayer of, of our Lord shortly before his crucifixion and death. And so for us, I think that we might uh, meditate on this question is a uh, question of unity. What is the source of unity for the church? And the source of unity for the church is the Holy Spirit. He is the source of unity for the church. It's that relationship between the Father and the Son, which is the bond of love, the Holy Spirit, which is a source of unity in the church. And part of the challenge, I think, for the church is very often is, is that we are not listening uh, to the Holy Spirit. We who are members of the church are not listening uh, to the Holy Spirit because in listening to the Holy Spirit, sometimes we're called to places uh, that we don't understand, perhaps we don't agree with, whatever it might be, there is a challenge. Uh, and so there is a revolt of, of spirit. At least in my own life, I think to myself, what has been uh, the greatest places of division? And you can see this, uh, these divisions become more evident, and particularly uh, in this very moment in the life of the church, becomes particularly as we move towards elections. You know, we all are, can be say we're Catholic and we're Christians, we agree upon certain values. But as soon as we get into the application of the values, then all of a sudden everyone's in a different place. And so all of a sudden people begin to fight. You can see this if you, even if you read our diocesan paper and you read when there's an article uh, in the paper, a pro-life article, which some people may think is pro-Trump, other people think is anti-Trump if there's something about immigration where people think, you know, the application becomes the place where there is great uh, conflict. We can agree on values, but the application of values becomes the place of conflict. And, and this, I think, is because of our pride. Because religion becomes as much about ideology as it does uh, about a faith in a relationship with the person, which is that person uh, of Jesus Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, as we come together today, maybe we can reflect on this call to unity, the bond of unity, which is the Holy Spirit, and how we are called in this unity to be one with another in our relationship with Christ, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, which is a bond of love. That does not mean that we suspend our brain. You know, it's very imp impressive when you read Acts of the Apostles, when you listen to St. Paul, what's he doing? St. Paul is using his brain, right? He's a Pharisee. Pharisees are the, would be the, <clears throat> would predate the rabbis, right? And remember, the rabbi would be the learned one about the law. He understands the law. This is a, his role is different in Jewish society during the time of the temple. Uh, there were many synagogues, and so he would be a teacher in the villages and towns reflecting on the law, reflecting on how is it that I can be a good Jew. This is different from the Sadducees, who are the priestly class. They're involved in the cultic sacrifice in the temple. And as a result of these two different tensions in the Jewish uh, community, 
St. Paul is able to exploit it and become free because he himself has been a Pharisee and he is able to start to speak about the afterlife and angels, things which he know rabbis agree with, but Sadducees disagree with and there was some disagreement, discord, and as a result, he's free. How is it that sometimes we, as Christians, can allow the differences to rip us apart and divide us as opposed to doing what we have been called to do by Christ, which is what? To go out and baptize all nations in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God has given us a specific mission and we get distracted by our mission because of division. And actually this division comes from the devil. Uh, it's the devil, it's Satan who is the one who is sowing the seeds of division in our communities uh, and, uh, and which is causing the fracturing of that proclamation of the gospel and the manifestation of the proclamation of the gospel, which is the healing of the sick and the taking care of the poor. Lastly, I want to just say a word of congratulations. Today, uh, Betty Ann, uh, who was our lector, is graduating uh, from her with her master's degree in special education. And you think about uh, how important education is, is to know is then to love. And if you think about the important work of special education, it's overcoming obstacles so that you can know and love. And brothers and sisters, that this is what the church is really for us, is special education, because we are overcoming the obstacle, the obstacle of sin, so that we can come to know Christ and then to live the life of grace. May God bless you. stand now and offer our prayers petition to our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Pray for all our bishops, priests, deacons, religious. We pray to the Lord. Pray for our present and pray for all those who are leaders of nations that the Holy Spirit come into their minds and hearts so they might always build up the common good. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an end to racial violence and discord and we pray in a particular way for healing uh, within our community and pray for healing of historical injustices which manifest themselves even uh, today, we pray to the Lord. Pray for the sick, the suffering, the abandoned, the forgotten, those who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the church which is struggling and need and remembering the church in places where there is experiencing intense persecution, places in Asia, China, remembering places in the Middle East, whether it be uh, Iraq or Iran, uh, Saudi Arabia, other parts uh, of the Middle East, Syria, uh, Egypt, where there is discrimination and persecution, that there may also be strength, we pray to the Lord. Pray for the sick, the suffering, the abandoned, the forgotten, those who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. And for George Farrell, for whom the Mass this morning is offered, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you know all our needs and petitions here and answer us. If they be in accord with thy holy will, we ask this as all things through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. It is surely right and just. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accept the oblation of this sacrifice, making us an eternal offering through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight so that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Nicholas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the glorious martyrs, St. Teresa of Avila and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait for the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit through the same Christ our Lord. And so just once again, we want to congratulate uh, Betty Ann on her, on her graduation, but also all those who are uh, graduating from high school, grammar school, high school, college, advanced degrees. We know that this is a a little bit of a, a difficulty that you're not able to walk down the aisle and receive your diploma after all so much uh, very, very hard work. Uh, but, uh, but you should know that uh, that hard work has been rewarded and, uh, and that all, uh, all are very proud of the work that you have done uh, and the work that you will go on to do using your degree. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a very nice day. Thank you.